Yesterday, entering the doubleheader of NBA playoff action, we had the NBA draft lottery, where something notable happened in a big way. And with a bigger draft, it might have been a bigger story. As we welcome you here to hour number two, live on this Monday as a new week begins on the early line. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. Two more hours to go till 11 a.m. Eastern. We will look back on the weekend continuously and set the stage for a new week. And Donnie, we start with the NBA draft lottery. Is tanking dead in the NBA? Does this year in 2024 for the NBA draft really even matter? A huge upset for the number one overall pick as the ping pong balls bounce in the favor of the Atlanta Hawks. They had a three, three percent chance to get the number one overall selection. And Atlanta does Get it, 3%, Donnie. As we looked at the odds that were set on the FanDuel Sportsbook that correlated with your percentage chance to earn whatever draft slot it was, Atlanta was 29-1, to 1, fifth longest number to get the number one overall pick. And the Hawks will draft first in the NBA draft coming up at the end of June. Yeah, just need a little bit of luck here, and that's certainly what Atlanta got. Now, the question is, who are you actually going to get with that number one pick, and did you need the luck this year as opposed to in the next few years if you expect a much deeper draft class now? So good on the Hawks here, but also I do agree with this. I, I like I understand like how the NFL does it, but you're also in a partnership with the rest of the league with yourselves, which means you're supposed to put your best foot forward on a night to night basis. That doesn't happen in the NBA. And quite frankly, a lot of times it doesn't happen in Major League Baseball late in the season. What do you see a lot of times here? Let's play our starters here first half. And then when the game's a little bit closer in the fourth quarter, let's just say we're going to give some other guys looks here and you end up losing those games. So the team plays well, you get your work in, but you still lose because you get better ping pong balls. It's nice to see that you're not rewarding for being the worst team here. And Detroit winding up in the fifth overall spot here. Good for the NBA at this point. That's the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to have an opportunity to get number one, but don't give them a guaranteed number one shot for being a bad basketball organization. Sure, but the Detroit Pistons have had the worst lottery luck we have ever seen. Because you finished with the worst record, as Detroit did, 14 and 68, you were not given a 28% chance well in front of the rest of the field to have the number one overall pick. As we were figuring out on Friday morning, we had four teams anywhere between a 13 and 14% shot, shot to earn that number one overall selection, of which Detroit was in that group of four. But the Pistons, who finished with the worst record in last year's NBA campaign as well, fall to number five for a second consecutive year. Last year, debilitating because the number one overall pick in the NBA draft lottery was actually just the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes. This year, maybe not as bad because we don't have a generational type talent going first overall and it's perhaps the weakest nba draft class we have seen in the last two three decades by all draft evaluator perspective this year in the association so let's run through the top 10 just to give you the order the atlanta hawks pull the upset they will draft number one overall the washington wizards second worst record second overall pick the Houston Rockets, for like the final three weeks of the NBA season, were giving the Warriors a push for that 10th and final spot into the play-in tournament. The Houston Rockets finished at 41-41 and 41 and even 500, and the Rockets will draft third overall. Again, pretty wild stuff there, DRS, in the top three. Yeah, and that's good because you do want to have that added intrigue, but also knowing that if you play well and try to make the playoffs, that you still have an opportunity to move up in the draft as we saw with Houston here. I like that aspect of it. And also, this draft is so bad this year. Like Zach Eady could be a lottery pick, and also Bronny James could be justified now as a first-round pick because who the heck else are you going to take at some of these positions late in the first round? But also, the money spends the same here, Ben. That's what I talk about. Congratulations if you are a player entering the draft who you might not have been drafted in previous years. You could be a first-round draft pick with that guaranteed four-year contract, something to look forward to, which is a shame because we all get excited around the NBA draft, but this draft absolutely lackluster from top to bottom. Yeah. So Atlanta, yes, celebrating that big win. They'll still get a quality basketball player, but even though, as you talked about with Detroit going back to five, is it that big of a deal in this draft? Because, quite frankly, 
the top five, top ten, we look at the mock drafts. It's like, right. who? Who is this? What? This guy? Yeah, there's a lot of that. It's a really good point. We'll look at Detroit in just a moment. It's more of a representation for how the luck in the Motor City has not really been working out for the Pistons as of late when it comes to the NBA draft with such a young and talented core under Monty Williams. Where exactly is this idea of optimism going to be met with any level of expectation? But I believe I heard you say, Bronny James... Some breaking news in the last 10 minutes from our guy Shams Sharania of FanDuel TV and The Athletic. Sources telling Shams, Bronny James is expected to stay in the 2024 NBA draft. The USC freshman has been fully cleared to play in the league as part, as part of the fitness to play panel and will participate in all pre-draft activities starting with the draft combine in Chicago this week. Again, We'll look at the statistical performances out of Bronny James in his only year in college hoops at Southern Cal. It was not very good. Of course, he had the medical hardship this past summer. All the things that happened with his cardiac arrest episode from summer workouts at USC to even play this past year was a very positive sign. But part of the reason Bronny James is an appealing NBA draft prospect is because if you draft Bronny James, you might have a shot at landing LeBron James as well, even in the year 22 with a highly productive 21st year in the NBA. In all indications, DRS, the Lakers are going to make a full go at drafting Bronny James. They do not currently have a first-round pick or a lottery selection, of course, but they're going to make a go at getting Bronny James either in round number one with a ton of draft assets, potential, potentially on the block in terms of trading for the future, or maybe even as a second round selection. Yeah, it's always interesting to bring up Bronny James because if it wasn't Bronny James as his name, it was Tom Smith. Nobody would talk about yep. him even getting drafted at this point. But again, just goes to the depth of the name recognition and what it means to keep LeBron James happy with the Lakers and also how bad this draft is. Because you're also taking a look. Like, Let's just say the Lakers trade up yeah. into the first round and do take him, right? Nobody's going to be upset with that. Like, oh, my God, we just passed on a really good basketball player just to keep LeBron happy. Like, down at the bottom of the first round, like, you're going to hear guys that you never even heard of even played before. Like, how did that guy become a first-round draft pick? So it might be good for the Lakers that this is the draft that Bronny James is eligible and also that the Lakers are looking to pick him just to keep his dad happy. So it could be a perfect storm for the Lakers where you're not passing up a for good sure. basketball player. You're just keeping your team happy, and maybe that's all it takes. And, a, and listen, there's going to be the conversation because of his name and all the stardom and attention that comes with it. Because if you had Kyle Smith playing with these kind of numbers, would he be an NBA draft prospect? 4.8 points per game in his 25 games last year at USC in less than 20 minutes of game action. He shot 36.6% from the floor, less than 27% from deep it is fun it is fair to question and potentially criticize those numbers as an NBA draft prospect but what I will say for somebody that loves college basketball even the best and brightest college basketball player your first team all-americans your national player of the year for two straight years and a guy like Zach Eady does not necessarily translate with collegiate success to the best success at the NBA level, it is a different game entirely. Could Brody James be a productive role player, maybe even a starter throughout his NBA career? For sure. And if you have the prospect of keeping or getting LeBron James, then it's a great draft pick. Certainly in this year's draft class in 2024, the Lakers a heavy favorite to draft Bronny James at plus 185. The New York Knicks have the second best number at 14 to 1. A little bit more around the draft lottery before we preview the doubleheader on this Monday. Now, ah, the reaction is already starting to pour out with the news that Bronny James is planning to remain in the NBA draft in 2024. Anyway, as we look at who actually is going to go in the opening round or maybe in those top couple of picks, again, it is not a great draft class. But Alexander Saar, the native Frenchman who plays his pro basketball currently in Perth as a part of the NBA, or NBL, excuse me, that's the professional league down under. He is a hefty minus 190 odds on favorite to be that number one overall pick. 
that potentially the Atlanta Hawks are going to make. There you see Donovan Klingon on your screen. 14-1 to the number on Klingon. We would expect to see a couple of those Connecticut Huskies from last year's national championship team. Klingon and Steph Castle going in the top five, top ten. But really the story is Alexander Saar going first overall, the presumptive favorite there. But everybody else behind him, and eh, not being all that strong of a draft class. No, it's certainly not. Like the superstar front level talent where you draft that b- the player, and it's like, okay, season tickets are about to go through the roof. That's not going to be in the equation because we look, Donovan Klingon is a really good college basketball player, super athletic. But when we think about some of these guys that are supposed to be drafted in the top five, I was like, yeah, Klingon shoots like 45% from three point range. He's going to be unbelievable. It's not really his game. He's just an athletic big man that's going to be able to run the court, which does have some value. But my goodness, third overall is kind of crazy. You take a look at Dillingham and Shepard, one of those guys, bench warmer coming off. There. Now, granted, was on the bench because it made some sense to get that instant impact scoring. But come on, man. Shepard is a top five draft pick in the NBA. That's one of those guys you take a look at the end of the first round or the second round. You're like, oh, man, this guy could be pretty good here and fill in as an active shooter in the NBA. It's just the way this draft is going to play out. There's not a lot of excitement around it. And quite frankly, where will the superstars be? We won't know if this draft is really effective until yeah. five or six years down the road. But I got to tell you right now, the list of, oh, my goodness, we got to get this guy. And yes, if you got the number one pick, it's like, oh, who do we get? Some guy from France here. Well, it worked out well last year. I don't know if it works out as good this year. Right. He is not Alexander Saar is not Victor Wembanyama. He is not that generational talent. There was so much notoriety around the NBA draft last year and the draft lottery because of Wemby, who ended up having an incredibly promising rookie campaign in winning NBA Rookie of the Year unanimously for only the sixth time in the history of the association. Alex Saar is probably not that. Again, we'll continue to dive into the NBA draft. There will be the headlines around who goes number one, who goes top five, who goes in the lottery, and, of course, the story of Bronny James. But I do want to make this final point about the Detroit Pistons because, again, this year it doesn't really suck to drop from one to five. Last year, a gut-wrenching punch to not be involved in the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes despite having the worst record at 17 and 65. An even worse record this year at 14 and 68 in Monty Williams' debut year in Detroit. This is courtesy of Chris Vanini of The Athletic. In 18 NBA draft lotteries, the Pistons have moved up from their expected pick once. That was back in 2021 to draft second overall and have dropped down from their expected selection nine times including the past two years when they had the worst record in one of the three best chances of drafting number one overall to drop down by four spots both of the years. Again, this year, is it as debilitating as last year? Absolutely not. But does it stink and show the bad luck in the lottery for the Detroit Pistons? Boy, oh boy, does it ever. They have dropped down a total of 11 draft slots in the last four NBA draft lotteries. Not fun for those ping pong balls for this Pistons organization. No, it doesn't. So get back on the court, win some basketball games. Don't keep looking next. True. You got some talent on that team. You signed the coach to one of the biggest contracts in the history of the NBA. There are no excuses for the Pistons just to say, like, well, we got to be in the top. We have to be a top three pick for five straight years in order to actually start to win games. Nonsense, man. Start winning some games. Just talent on that roster. Enough said here. Stop looking towards the draft to sort of bail you out. And listen, that's a very fair point as well. Oh, bad luck for the Pistons. Win more games. Mm -hmm. Don't be involved in the draft lottery or don't care as much about having to fall for draft slots. It is very much in your hands just because of that being the case. If you are in that position and scenario to have it work out the way it did, not all that great. By the way, around Victor Wembanyama, San Antonio will draft fourth and eighth overall in the top 10. Some draft assets to use to maybe trade. Reportedly, San Antonio will be invested in looking after Trey Young with Atlanta drafting first overall just some interesting stuff in the remainder of the draft lottery for the first time as well drs the nba Mm -hmm. draft trying to follow the copy of the nfl 
making the draft a bigger production from the TV side of things. It will be Wednesday and Thursday night this year. The opening round on Wednesday, June 26th. That second round on Thursday, June 27th. I know Donnie Wright's side will be tuned in. Yeah, that's I don't understand the thought process for that, because in the NBA, it's like, okay, you you really only watch like basically the draft lottery. If most people even do that, having a second night here to watch guys nobody's ever heard of get through there. You can do that in the NFL because there's still quality starters that you're going to get. You're going to get guys are going to be throwing their names in there. And some of the analysts like, okay, yeah, the guy's from Belarus. Congratulations. And he probably won't make the NBA. I don't agree (laughs) with this move here. That's a one night affair because we only care about the first few picks in the NBA anyway. Listen, maybe you're selling some Taco Bell ad space with the 41st overall pick in the second round, yeah. like one Nikola Jokic out of Serbia a few years ago. You never know what is going to happen in the NBA draft. I'm sure Commissioner Wright's side wants to get involved in the NBA yeah. League office to yeah. try to figure out this new schedule as well. So that's the NBA draft lottery with the NBA draft coming our way in just about a month and a half.